giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Well, Ben, let's uh, transition into the Galileo division uh, with some big names uh, coming from there, especially some teams that uh, maybe didn't do so well last year that are kind of up back on the rise once again. Yeah, we've got a lot of great teams on Galileo, a lot of uh, a lot of name brand teams that you might know of that we've seen major reveal videos about or a lot of hype about. Um, the biggest name on the division, I would say, is probably 971 Spartan Robotics. So they've got two blue banners so far this year. They've got a really small robot that can fit on the HAB3 with another robot and also a very unique suction gripper that a lot of teams have talked about here that picks up both the hatch panels and the balls. Um, they've really had a really dynamite year this year, especially compared to last year. Even last year, they weren't bad. It was just, you know, this year, they're just so much more ahead of the pack and um, look for them to make a splash here. So the second uh, most recognizable name, I would say, is probably 179. Um, they're always one of the first powerhouse teams to reveal a video this year. Uh, and this year they did the same thing. Um, they went on to win their second event where they got to the point of soling rockets in the playoff rounds during there. So they're doing uh, they've done a fantastic job this year. Last year's robot was good. Uh, ended up being a lot of the the autos that ended up differentiating everybody and they weren't able to get on that. Uh, 34, 76, uh, Madtown Alliance. There were three, three good, robo three really good robots in the division. They were left out of that group. Um, but you know, this year they're definitely pushing to be near the top of the pack. So uh, expect them to make a really good showing here in Houston. Um, so projected to rank first in Caleb Sykes simulations that he did, we've got 1986 Team Titanium. Um, they've been at three events this year so far. They've yet to win a blue banner because of a lot of the differences that we see between quals and playoffs. But they have been the number one seed or picked first at all their events so far this year. Um, and if they can fix that little small issue in their game about the dealing with defense that they've had in some of their playoff matches, then expect them to do very well here, especially since they've, you know, they, they've shown that they can put up the scores. Uh, so th there's a good shot that team titanium will do very well at the championship. So having a slightly tougher schedule than some of these other uh, teams is four, four, one, four, high tide uh, so it's the rookie but not rookie that we have from california um so they really exploded on the scene this year they've won two events so far from the number one alliance they're really the only team that i know of maybe you guys chime in if you think that this is different but they're the only team that i know of that has the propensity now at this point to start what would be a 2056 streak now granted they're only on number they're only on number two Right now, a little bit of ways to uh, go, but yeah, they, yeah, they got a long ways to go. But um, you know, we'll. Uh, I mean, they're from either they or fifty one ninety nine were already cheesecaking partners in their uh, in their playoff rounds at their most recent event. So it's kind of you know th these guys are pretty serious business here. Um, so really look for them to make a splash in Galileo. I, I mean, everyone's watching them. They're clearly, um, they're clearly very serious about building a powerhouse FT FRC team here. Um, so we've got a mix of other contenders on Galileo. It's by no means uh, a lock in. We've got some really powerful teams here. We got two great teams from Georgia, uh, 2974 Walton Robotics. They've won three events as the number one pick, including the Georgia State Championship. Uh, we got 1102 Making Magic. They've yet to win an event this year, but they've also posted a bunch of impressive scores at their events. Um, and they, they could uh, make a serious showing here as well. Um, on the Texas side, we've got uh, two teams I want to call it especially. We got Team 2468, Team Appreciate. Uh, so they've won two district events and were the number two pick at Fit Champs. Uh, we've also got 4587 Jersey Voltage. They're predicted to seed high based on Caleb's like simulations. Um, and they're also a team that's traditionally shown consistent improvement event over event. Um, they're one of those teams that really likes to upgrade their robot constantly. So um, expect them to be really good here as well. Um, have to call out from Arizona, Team 2478 Westwood Robotics. They've had a really strong year so far, being the number one alliance at both events and winning one of them with 118. Um, 
on the PNW side, 4488 Shockwaves. Really love that team. It's one of my favorite teams that's not my own. Um, they've gone on to win the to the finals again at PNW District Champ, and they also won an event from the number one seed, a district event. Uh, very strong robot there. They always make a strong showing, very smart team. Um, so look for look for Shockwave to make a valuable contribution to whatever alliance they end up on here. Um, internationally, there are uh, a few uh, teams we want to call out. Might call them dark horses because maybe if you watch the videos, they have a little bit less point throughput than some of these other teams. But I want to call out 5985 Project Bucephalus. They won the Southern Cross with 4613. Um, also have to call out 3646 Integra. They were a, a Turkish team finalist on Long Island as the number one seed where they played with Team 11, Mort. Um, another dark horse that may or may not be a dark horse in this case is, uh, team 1538, the Holy cows. They've also shown tremendous improvement from event over event this year, um, going from a second round pick to an early first round pick. So who knows where they're end up for the championship. They, they really, uh, they could show up with a super strong robot that is ready to take the division. You know, we've seen a lot of that from Holy cows, especially, uh, even going back to 2013, where they had arguably one of the best robots at the championship uh, by the time they were there. So um, really could be anything that comes from them. Um, any other teams you guys want to call out? Um, I want to make mention of uh, 1414 IHOT mm -hmm. from Peachtree. They've yeah. been really solid this year. Um, they had some, there was a little bit of controversy at their first event where one of either them or their partners 1102 weren't allowed onto the field in the semifinals Aww. and that lost it for them but they came back won the columbus event um and then they had a strong appearance at a state championship um 54 31 has been well two texas teams 54 14 paradox mm -hmm. and 54 31 titan robotics in memory of jordan grant have both been really good this year um 5431 pretty much dominated the Plano district event. Um, pulled out of chairman's there. Um, they were semifinalists at Greenville, uh, quarterfinalists at Texas State Champs. Um, and they're one of the couple of Texas chair teams in contention for the chairman's awards or chairman's award at Worlds. And then uh, their partners from State Champs, 5414 Paradox, um, they've had another really strong season. Um, they've really hit it hard with all their low cycling um, and mm -hmm. their their climber where they you know flip their entire arm back and then just flip themselves over um, so they've been really coming with that um, those are a couple of teams that I saw that didn't get mentioned uh, any other mentions I want to mention from Mexico 3480 which is kind of like a broader to 3478 and just as a random fact 3480 has been eliminated by 3478 in every event so they haven't been able to to advance oh, wow. higher because they go against their brothers. But they're they have a great elevator this year and they they can do the cargo ship really good and they're working on the rocket. But if if you want a robot with a great drama train which can work work on the cargo ship, they're gonna be a great pick for any alliance. Well, props to them there. And clearly, I mean, we keep mentioning teams. This is a pretty deep division, relatively speaking, for the the divisions here at um, at Houston Champs. So it's going to be a real competitive matchup going into the finals here. It, it, it's it's going to be pretty fantastic. Do you do you have any you want to show here, Tyler? Yeah, one I want to mention is uh, I, I don't I don't know if you call it. So I'm sorry if I miss it, but 6800 Viperbots Valor. Oh, we have we haven't even talked about them. Yeah, yeah, oh. out, of, out of Texas as well too. I think has a really slick uh, machine. Uh, looking forward to them. I just want to give just uh, it's not a hot take, but just a, a hope uh, for something as well too that at Fit Championships, two four six eight didn't get chairmans. I thought they were going to win chairmans at the championship level, and I guess we put the cart before the horse. I would absolutely love to see 2468 come in and just kick ass in this division and take the division to move on to Einstein. So that that's my hopeful right there is some redemption for 2468 uh, to just come in and just completely dominate the division. Um, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to do it. Uh, I, I do question a lot of 1986, uh, to be honest with you. I saw them at Seven mm -hmm. Rivers. They played against my old team in the finals. Uh, great robot for quals, but... You know, honestly, they didn't even have that tough a defense played against them at Seven Rivers, and they seemed to kind of get shut down. Their their throughput. I mean, and robots broke down there, so they give credit where it's due for that. Robots do break down, and 
crap like that happens, but it seems to be kind of a continual thing. And I love 1986. I think they're a fantastic team, but uh, are they going to see number one in this division? Caleb, sorry, man. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think you, uh, I don't think the uh, ELO is going to work very well for you in this. And, you know, I'll, I'll eat my own foot if that, if that does happen, but uh, I, I just don't see something like that happening in this division. I, I see something like two four six eight or one seventy nine or uh, the uh, semi rookie sensation uh, High Tide. I think <laughs> who has such an amazing robot this year and has just completely come out and just absolutely dominating. Uh, I think one of those three teams we're going to see take the number one spot. Yeah, I, I I'm inclined to agree with you here, Tyler. I if I was betting money here, I'd say it's probably uh, nine seventy one ends up with either one seventy nine or High Tide. Yep, and. Yeah. I, I'm curious to see how, how defense gets played against 971 uh, and to see what the impacts. I mean, there's such a tiny footprint and such a tiny robot that, you know, if mm-hmm. they don't see it first, how do you almost not take them right away? Unless they are completely know. just, <laughs> you know, unless they're just crap in the bed or something like that. I don't I don't <laughs> see how, uh, how you don't take 971 as your number one pick just with the versatility out there that they can probably, uh, you know, do a double, triple climb with almost any robot out there. Um, I think holds a lot of value. Yeah, um, I do recall watching match video from Utah where 971 faced defense, and uh, the defense bot definitely won that battle. Um, but hopefully they worked on a little bit of the driving against defense coming into champs, because, I mean, the robot's incredible. It's really good. You know, they have such a small footprint, they can easily double or triple climb. Um, they're very solid just as long as they don't end up facing a uh, higher level defense. So I actually have a story about 971 on Utah. Um, it's about their driving and playoffs. Like, um, 3478 was texting me, like, during the event. And they were like, oh, no, something bad happened. And I'm saying, what? Um, so 971 seems to have their own custom joystick. And on semifinals, it broke. Or, or quarterfinals. So it, it was the first time the driver was using an Xbox controller to drive. Uh-oh. So shout out to 971. They drove amazing even though they had to change controllers from what I heard. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, God. Of yeah. The, the list of problems that you don't think will happen. I mean, <laughs> man, that, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty crazy. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.